as well as the thousands picking through rubbish, there's a hidden army of young laborers who work behind closed doors. This is it here. God, can you hear the furnace going? It's even a child-sized entrance. Tanjil had brought me to a glass recycling factory where they make bottles for export to South Korea. Good God. Jahangir. Very nice to meet you. Ten-year-old Jahangir works a full shift here every day for the equivalent of 30 pence, enough to buy his family a small bag of rice. Why did you put that one in there, Jahangir? It's no good. Uh, it's broken. Basically quality control, isn't it? It was more than 40 degrees centigrade outside, and the heat standing here by the furnace was almost unbearable. There's fumes coming from the furnace. They're really choking. And we're just here for a few minutes. So he's taking us up to see where he, uh, where he sleeps with his mum and his sister. And can you see his sister is barefoot in a glass factory? It's a bit rickety, isn't it? So Jahangir, where, where do you sleep? This is his bed. Just right here. And does, is it just your family here, or are there more people who live here? Many of us live here, 10 or 12 people. There are quarrels. People sometimes eat other people's food, and this causes arguments. Do you find it hard working in the factory? Yes. If I had a home, then I wouldn't have needed to work. I could have gone to school, my mum would have worked. Why did mum want you to come and live here? Why did mum want you to come to the glass factory? Because of hunger. Factory owners like to employ children because they're cheap, they have nimble fingers, and they complain less than adults. So shift change, new operator. But this operator, can you show us your can you show us your arm? It seems obvious that these children should be stopped from working. But the older labourers wanted me to understand what can happen when children here are prevented from earning a living. You see, there are foreigners who come here and they stop the children from working. <laughs> If we throw the children out of work, what are they going to live on? If they don't work, they'll die of hunger. So they go out begging or stealing. They'll do anything if they're hungry. Hunger drives them to do many things. These men all started working between the ages of 9 and 11. Child labour is a harsh fact of life in Bangladesh. Nearly 5 million children here earn vital income for their families or themselves. But Jahangir's boss has been persuaded to give him a few hours off each day to visit a special centre for working children run by UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. So this is the centre. Oh my good God. Oh my goodness. Hello! <laughs> Salam alaikum! 
Jahangir, you've got a lot of friends here. This is my friend. The centre gives working boys a free lunch, a shower and space to learn and have fun. Most of all, it gives them the chance simply to be children. There's a few good shots here. They're, they've all had a lot of practice, haven't they? Now, Zahangir, tell us, what do you like about coming to the centre? I like to play the Karen board. This is your favourite thing about the centre, is playing this game. What about your friends? Yes, my friends are here with me and I like that too. Western campaigners and fashion firms have forced Bangladeshi clothing factories to stop employing child labour. But this has meant many families going hungry and many children have taken riskier jobs. Fazana Ahmed from UNICEF says they've been forced to accept child labour as a necessary evil. But in thousands of centres across the country, UNICEF is now teaching children skills to break the cycle of poverty. Some people watching this might be surprised that you're not working to try and close down the factories where the children are working. What would you say in response to that? We really cannot say that, OK, uh, stop uh, child labour right at this moment, because the reality is that many of the families are really dependent on the earning of the children. And if they can have a um, safe and working environment, and if they have scope of uh, going to school, uh, some free time for recreation, they're having a scope to have a different kind of life. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see these boys having fun.